All right, our next step is to modify our access control list to allow DHCP to work. So um, from PC0, we're going to try to get an IP address from DHCP. It's going to send out a request to the network um, that basically says, hey, I want a DHCP address. Is anybody out there that wants to give me a DHCP address? And uh, hopefully there'll be something listening that will be able to process that. Uh, it's a broadcast request, so anything on the, the VLAN or same subnet will be able to hear that broadcast request from PC0. And at this point, I've configured uh, the router to be a DHCP server for VLAN 2. So um, what theoretically should happen is the PC should send out a broadcast request, the router should hear it and send back uh, a response to that request, and then they should negotiate an IP address. In reality, what's going to happen is I still have my access control list in place on my router. And if we look at my outbound from VLAN 2 list, there is nothing in here that's going to allow DHCP to work. So when we try to get an IP address with DHCP, it's going to fail. So if I try to get an IP address, it's going to fail. If, uh, if you're working in the lab or in your environment with real things, you can do that same step with ipconfig slash release uh, on a Windows machine to release your, your request, your address if you have one, and renew will try to request an address. So in this case, what do we need to do? Well, we need to modify our VLAN 2 list to allow traffic to work for DHCP. So we need to add the proper ports for that. And if you're saying, hey, Rich, what ports do they use? Well, um, you can look it up. Um, I know it's 67 and 68 for U UDP, but I don't know which one's the source and which one's the destination. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the network traffic because if you know me at all, you know that's what I always want to do, look at the network traffic. So I'm going to look at the network traffic and see what's happening at the network traffic and then build my access control list based on that. So if I go look at the DHCP request, if I go find the UDP header, it's going from port 68 to port 67. So if I want to write an access control list for that, I want to edit my uh, VLAN 2 list. And then, you know, I'm, I've, I've done this list, so you think maybe, maybe it might look like that. Let's try something like that except domain, it's not going to be domain, we'll put, was it 68 the destination port? No, 67 was the destination and the source was 68. So let's go ahead and specify those ports exactly. So the destination was 67 and the source port was 68. So that's a list I could put on there, right? I could try that list. Um, but I'm not going to because I know it's not going to work. And hopefully you're thinking, hey, Rich, that, how would that work? We're, we don't have an IP address yet, so how can you filter based on IP address? And that's very good thinking if you were thinking that. And if you weren't thinking that, let's go review our IP header for this DHCP request. And if we look, we don't have an IP address yet. So we cannot send traffic using IP um, to a, sorry, we cannot send unicast traffic using IP because we do not have an IP address. We can send broadcast traffic using the IP protocol, and since we don't have an IP address, we're going to send it from, from the all zeros address to the broadcast address. This is sending it to the unspecified broadcast address, so we're, we're, we're not going to put these uh, addresses in there. We're just going to leave it as any. So we're going to let anything any any source IP going from port 68 to any source IP going to port 67. So we'll add that to our router uh, access control list. And now we'll try to get an IP address and hopefully it'll work. So yeah, so that's what we needed to add to let traffic work to the server. So if you're doing the packet tracer assignment, the packet tracer assignment was to make it work for VLAN two and three. So at this point, if I was doing that, I would create a new pool for VLAN three, and I would also add um, this rule to the VLAN three list. But I'm not going to do that because uh, that's exactly the same thing we're going to do. For VLAN three, uh, we're going to look at DHCP on the 
server. So in this case, in this case, I have PC1. I have set the server up for DHCP. This is not part of the assignment, so you don't have to do this. I've set the server up. The server pool is the default pool. I set it up for VLAN 3. Um, so now, you know, I have not added this list to my VLAN 3 list. If you look at my VLAN 3 list, I'm not allowing, I'm not allowing DHCP traffic on the VLAN 3 list. That list is applied to the interface so if I try to get an IP from DHCP is it gonna fail or is it gonna it looks like it worked so so why did that work if from VLAN 2 if I'm trying to get an address from the router it's failing but from VLAN 3 if I'm getting an address from the server it's working and it's working because traffic from this PC to the server they're all they're in the same VLAN, so that traffic doesn't actually make it to the router. So the router does not see that VLAN 3 traffic, so that traffic is not filtered by the access control list. So that's why that works. So if, if the system lives on the same, same subnet, no filtering required on the router. So that's pretty easy. Uh, I don't know if you noticed, I have a VLAN 2 list on, on the, the server, and so I'm going to go, I'm going to go configure my router VLAN 2 interface. We did this in the lab, so int fa0 slash 1.2. I'm going to put an IP helper address on there um, of 10.1.1.130. So hopefully you remember the IP helper address is a way we can tell our router, hey, if you hear any DHCP requests, send those over to the DHCP server. Uh, and I have the DHCP server configured for DHCP. So now you might be thinking, well, I'm thinking two things. One, I'm thinking I have the DHCP server on the router. So am I still going to get my answer from the router or is it going to forward it to the Linux server? So I still got an answer from the router. So I'm going to go get rid of that DHCP pool on the router. Um, how did I know I got it from the router? Well, I got it from the I know I got it from the router because I got um, 11, 11, and my server, my Linux server pool was set to start at. Oh wait, that's not even right. I had a typo. My Linux server, my it's not Linux. My packet tracer server is set to start at 50. So it should have gotten an IP address of 50. So I'm going to go get rid of, the, of my DHCP server config, which basically if you do this, it makes it go away. Every semester in the lab, somebody's like, what about the DHCP excluded addresses? Do I need to get rid of that? I mean, you can, but it doesn't matter. If the DHCP server is not running, it's not going to give out those addresses. In the real world, you'd probably want to clean up things you're not using, so we'll go ahead and get rid of that just because we want to pretend like we're good uh, good admins. So now that's gone. So now let's go try to get a, a, an address again, and hopefully this time the router will forward it to the server, and it didn't work. So in this case, what's happening is PC0 sends a broadcast request, which is over here, we can look at, at that. Let's clear this and do it again so we can see that request. We're sending that request. So it, it's the same as before, but now our router is not listening for those requests. Now our router has been configured to send those requests to 10.1.1.130. So the router is sending that request to the server and then the server is going to reply. And if we if we look, let's clear this and do it again and see see if the the request see if the server tries to reply. So the server is trying to send a reply. The server is trying to send a reply back to the router. The router router would forward that to the PC. Um, but the problem is our access control list is not allowing that traffic. So our our outbound from VLAN 3 list is not allowing that traffic. So we need to put a, a rule on, um, on 
the the VLAN three list to let traffic from the server to the router port sixty seven. Right, that's how we would figure out what ports we need if we didn't want to look up and look, read in the RFC port sixty seven for both. So let's go ahead and add that list to our VLAN three list outbound from VLAN three. And in this case, we can permit UDP host 10.1.1.130 host nope nope eq67 host 10.10.1.1. Let's see what it was in the um, packet. I think it was 10.1.1.1, right? 10.1.1.1, 10.1.1.1 eq67. So in this case, this is going to let traffic um, from our DHCP server to back to our router interface that forwarded that DHCP request. So I'm going to look at that. I'm going to be like, okay, well, if that's the only other VLAN I'm using, then that access list is okay. But then I might be thinking, well, if I have a different VLAN, then the traffic's going to be coming from a different router interface, and I think I'm just going to let that go to to any. You know that would that would simplify not having to modify this list if I add another VLAN to my DHCP server. So I'm gonna add that list. So it's basically saying, hey, let any traffic from my DHCP server using the DHCP ports go out. So now, hopefully, there we go. I didn't even have to turn it off. I uh, it, it got an address uh, while I was watching when I brought it back up. So now, you know, if we if we go look. We got that same traffic that came through, but now the access control list didn't block it. So that's that's what we can do on the router to our access control list to allow DHCP to work uh, for the different scenarios we might run into. The first was the DHCP server being on the router. And, and then the second scenario was the DHCP server being on the server uh, serving the same VLAN. We made no configuration changes for that to work. But then over here, when we wanted PC0 to get an IP from the server, we had to put a helper address on the router, and then we had to allow the return traffic back from the server. So that's what we would be looking at to make uh, DACP work uh, in conjunction with our access control lists.